Business in the 21st century. Over the years, regular business activities has only been predominantly on physical premises in both public and private sectors. This has posed a lot of limitations to business growth because of the attendance expenses needed to run the day-to-day -day floor of the event in the premises. Before now, business service delivery depend mainly on the availability of personnel who work from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. In the absence of such personnel, the business activities will be stalled or delayed in the quest for alternative personnel to fill the gap. The above are a few of many problems identified in the solution provided by the emergence of technology. Business model in the 21st century has been seen taking advantage of technology to deploy solutions that are accessible, convenient, and cost-effective in a sector like fintechs, logistics, as you can see in delivery, transportation, e-commerce, among others. The dynamism in the business operations also extends to staff management with the introduction of hybrid working system, which become more pre prominent after the COVID-19 pandemic heartbreak. This has proven to show that a trick in the previous obtained system is needed to ensure a sustainable business model. The need to promote technological skills has become necessary in the preventing business environment and the success of business will solely depend on how much technology simplification is available going forward. What do you think? Well, I can only speak from my own experience. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm a service provider for children with neurodevelopmental disorders, and I know that um, COVID made us change our um, mode of working in the sense that we would take on clients and we wouldn't really enforce training for the parents. But during COVID, a lot of children regressed and a lot of parents really suffered emotionally because they, could, they were helpless. They couldn't do anything to help their children. So in our industry, our new model was that anybody coming onto our program, parents will be trained. The whole house will be trained so that in case, God forbid, another COVID or something even worse, your, those vulnerable children will not suffer. So COVID itself has made us really reflect on what is really important in business. And I think every business was affected in some way or the other, whether good or bad. So I think running a business in this 20th century, it really goes beyond an office. I mean, that's my personal opinion. I mean, okay. I, I, I totally align with the thoughts of everyone. Um, before COVID, I remember I, used, I was having this conversation with a friend this week. Uh, prior to COVID, um, in, a, in an organization I used to work in, we always were clamoring for a hybrid model, what is now a hybrid model, mm -hmm. where we have some days where we could work from home and some days where we could work from the office. And the response we were always getting back then was, you millennials are too lazy. Mm -hmm. If you are not serious, are you expecting me to pay you to work from your house? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we are how many years down the line or months, Seth? Not, just, not really so many years. So I'm just months down the line and here is, this is what's obtainable. In fact, before anyone gets a job, I, I think each time I try to recruit someone, the key selling points has always been we operate a hybrid model so you can come to the office sometimes and sometimes work from, from home yeah. people see people see it now as a key selling point and that's an advantage so i guess and like you mentioned technology has actually influenced the way we do it now so i'm sure a lot of companies over the past two years have had to invest a lot more in technology than they had done in the past um things like sharepoint Things that are really that makes work easier for us to do has now become the key tools. And like Helen mentioned, it has sort of helped us reflect what really is productivity. It helped us really define what productivity really means. Mm -hmm. Does it mean I have to be sitting at my desk for eight hours a day? 
to be productive, to be productive mm. or do i have to or, or, or it also helps you define the metrics for yeah. measuring your staff so you mm. can really know okay if you deliver on xyz you are productive versus if i see you every single day yeah. <laughs> you're productive and you know i know a lot of people before covid had sort of taking advantage of the fact that oh I, I need to be there with my boss i need to go my boss every time so you're, you're always you're always like in the face of your boss trying to get in favor get promotion. exactly now that you're not in the face of your boss you have to really prove your worth yeah. and show what you can really bring to the table so so uh, uh, just like you talk about uh, you know productive is elective right and then if you want to assess the use of technology after post uh, covid-19 what do you see the, the, the deliverance of work activities what do you what if you want to rate it before covid and post covid what will you see you do you mean in terms of the amount productivity of work exactly productivity? not amount of work a kind of deliverables that you are actually seeing so i think for me um, when covid started it was more of because we were still trying to ease into working dif from a different location so you had to deliver more on you had a lot of reporting, so you have to report, okay, I did X, Y, Z today. And those things actually add to the amount of work you do per day, to be honest. So, um, but now that everyone is sort of comfortable and sort of trusts one another, so you know that, okay, um, the, the work, the workload, quote unquote, has sort of been eased out. And technology has also helped it because I know that if I am calling you on your phone, you're not picking call you on skype i call you on teams i call you on everything at least i know you'll be available so in a short while <laughs> you are accountable for what you do yes mm -hmm. unlike uh the uh, you seek for favor until mm -hmm. you do what you have to do mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. means mm -hmm. your productivity level is high yeah yes. it's better yes. compared to then yes. and probably because you, uh, the system is actually not prepared for the pandemic mm -hmm. and it becomes like a burden mm -hmm. at first mm -hmm. and then you begin to yeah thank you but, but sorry before you move on i remember a lot of people having to complain back then or even till now that they work a lot more now that they are not complain but let just comment that they work a lot more now that they are home than when they were at the office because mm -hmm. all those excesses have been reduced so i think i think uh, just before you go uh on that aspect, it, you know, we have uh, outline work that you are expected to do. You know, most companies probably start up will uh, involve technology because startup has very fast to adopt uh, new changes mm -hmm. rather than when you look at uh, civil service, um, you know, private mm -hmm. sector. So, you know, some of them don't have a clear work time. Mm. do you understand so, they yeah. build it a long time so i believe that can be as a result of not having a clear okay. work time yeah, right. and then you'll be able to say what are the metrics you use to judge deliverables mm. so as time goes on you see you're, you're employed to do reconciliation for example mm -hmm. at a point you do operational work mm -hmm. alongside mm -hmm. with your reconciliation because mm -hmm. if you you can since you understand the reconciliation mm -hmm. you are you best to, do? <laughs> to, to, to interact with the next yes. uh, available i think that yes. that could I, answer I, I that think so too. Yeah. i think so I, I, I think for me um uh, um zoom has now, I, I work on the mainland, and now, realistically, any meeting that I have on the island, I try to make it by Zoom because of the transportation involved, the manpower and everything. And also, some of my meetings, I get very upset, you know, and it's, you can see it during the meeting, and I'm upset, and then I'm getting very agitated. But when I'm on Zoom, I can hide, I can camouflage a lot of my... Um, you know, I'm when sure. they say they wear, yes, you know, you wear your hat on your sleeve, so to speak. Okay. So with the Zoom meeting, I can hide a lot of my emotional um, output. And that really helps me to sustain my business more. Because if I go into a meeting and we're always having head-on conflicts, they're going to wonder, this woman, but it's because I'm like, you're doing so much wrong. How can you not see it? Mm -hmm. So I think technology has actually helped well, me personally, to um, hold my emotions mm -hmm. so that I'm not so, it's like if I get upset now, they, you know, the camera can move to the next person and they don't see it and I can have time to, down, you know, and exactly. then, you know, continue. Yes. But in a face-to-face -face meeting, it's not the case. Mm -hmm. So I think technology has done a lot personally for my own company because um, 
even with our trainings, we can now train more people mm -hmm. across Nigeria through our training, um, Zoom or Google training classrooms than we could ever do before. So we're training thousands of teachers, thousands of parents on special education. Mm -hmm. Before, lovely. we had to physically go there. Yeah, so I go. think yeah. it, that, where I'm coming lovely. from, yes, yeah. it has done yeah. a lot. So I think just, just to add to it, considering like uh, Lagos, as for example, everybody wants to watch to meet up nine o'clock resumption time, you know, that heavy traffic and stuff like that. You see people leaving home as early as 4 a.m., yeah. 5 a.m., just to meet up 9 a.m., you know. But, uh, but the uh, post-COVID has shown that you can actually come in by 11 a.m. where exactly. the traffic is. Like yes. So the, the two hours, three hours can be productive doing something reasonable. Mm -hmm. So by the time you're done, mm -hmm. within one hour, you are at the office mm -hmm. if need be. And I think the, uh, why we, uh, the hybrid is very important is basically because you see culture. You need to understand the culture of the company that you are, you are working with. Mm -hmm. And you can actually note there are some things that will be missing if you're doing everything online. online so right. when you are there physically, you can actually learn some culture, some attitude. Just like you said, you know, you talk about the emotional aspect of it, probably in, in the negative parts that might affect. And sometimes the emotional part of it is necessary to build a culture in the positive aspect when you have a physical interaction. Mm -hmm. And that's when you see bonding, mm -hmm. get together and what mm -hmm. have you, just to have understanding on how you react and stuff like that, not just to mm -hmm. work, 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 work. Yeah. You it's understand? So, and again, um, I, I believe uh, you should also be looking at in, in your own uh, solution, just like you talk about people watching cartoons and stuff like that. So if you have recorded uh, uh, solutions for your services, mm -hmm. technology, you can actually have like Plus TV hearing it as a program or a section mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, you can actually reach out to more audience, audience. using technology. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is a proven fact that technology is it's a way to go in this century. So, and we should also look into universities like you mentioned ASU Strike the other time. I just love, you know, I just look at it from different perspective. Aside of government, even the so-called ASU are a problem themselves. Of course. You understand? It can't so, be removed. Because <laughs> the, the, the issue is, you see the lecture note that they are using is a lecture note in 1989. Calm and poor. You it. see somebody who is innovative, mm -hmm. who is innovative in an idea. He wants to bring in innovations to solve problems because mm -hmm. the university actually is meant to solve problems. Of it's, it's, a it's a research place. It's a research place. It's a exactly. research place. But you, well, you see people like kind of throwing you out because they feel you are a threat. So to everybody sees like, mm -hmm. because immediately you are adopted into the system. You, you give them a wake up call, mm -hmm. and they do, they don't want to. Yeah, they don't want to move an inch out of it. So mm -hmm. that is what technology does. You mm -hmm. know, it push you to actually uh, uh, reach your potential and mm -hmm. also reach the audience with what you have. Mm -hmm. But it it still goes back to the fact that you can't give what you don't have. So if you have, if you're not doing continuous educational um, performance. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, bring in more than what you know. And so these are some of the things that technology can do by reaching more people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can see the effect of technology, like in education, we have some, some startup like Edifest mm -hmm. trying to do remote training. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we have some delivery, like uh, you have Gigi and what have you, mm -hmm. who with, with your help, you can actually request for a delivery service. Mm -hmm. You have Jumia e-commerce mm -hmm. with technology. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, I, like we are talking about uh, Nigerian mm -hmm. as a whole, I don't care if you are Igbo, if you are Yoruba, mm -hmm. if you are T, if you are other and Uber, but my own is to use the technology to, to get, get to my destination, destination. Exactly. and then at a cheaper rate. So <laughs> I think that is it. So, openness is Ellen. Stay with us after the break. <laughs>